I want to start today with a quote from Charles Handy because Charles Handy says, creativity is, is, is born of chaos, even if it is somewhat difficult to glimpse the possibilities in the midst of confusion. And this should be our motto for the next weeks and months to come. I think we need a lot of creativity. We are there to help, help support shaping the new world. And obviously there will be a new world. At least that's what we hope. There are so many things that are happening in the moment. And for a moment, I would really ask you to think of the people who are suffering, who are sacrificing, who are dying because of injustice, because of course this, this uh, tragedy of the corona epidemics, but in particular of the, the injustice of our systems, of the in inequality, the things that are happening in the United States and elsewhere. So it's really time to change. And that's why we bring you together. That's why we want you to come together, join hands and really think about What's our role? How do we need to step up and step in as change facilitators in the time to come? So uh, what's, what's to be expected? Very, very quickly, and then I hand over to other people. We will have, um, we will have a festival, a, many, many lighthouses, beacon events. So let me quickly share my screen um, because we have very big plans. Today is the first lighthouse, which will be followed by two more lighthouses next week. And then we really want to have a 24 hours festival, the Global Change Days Festival, which starts at noontime, European time, uh, goes uh, then uh, to the night when the Americans join, the Australian agents join next day, and then we end on the noontime or three o'clock on the 27th. This will be so full of, uh, of events, of workshops, of surprises, but in particular, it will be a time for us to, to meet and to connect. And we'll, there will be a lot of surprises. So look at our website, globalchangedays.com. And um, if you haven't signed up for the entire journey, sign up. So without further much ado, I promise to stop after three minutes. I hand over to, I think, to Annette to lead us into the next part of this. Indeed, thank you. Uh, thank you, Holger. Today is the day. And it's a great honor to start the change makers journey with this lighthouse and with you all as, as you are here and some watching it live stream from outside. Finally, we are really touched at this moment. Uh, we, that is activist Esther Barfoot from Netherlands. Maybe you want to say hi. Hi, hello. <laughs> And our tech host and change maker Karin Ovari from Scotland, initially Austria, Australia, Australia, sorry. You want to say hi? And then hi, it's me. <laughs> then it's me, Annette Birkholz, change maker from Berlin. And we are excited to kick off with the most wonderful guest. We have invited the Vision Leader 2021 of a world leader in sports equipment retail, Decathlon United, and the leader, vision leader is Charlie Felgate, who joins us here from Lille in France. Hello, Charlie. You want to wave too? So we Hello. Can see you. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who's watching. Hi. Yes. yes. So, um, why did we invite you, Charlie? Because, because you rock. <laughs> and because although business worked really well for Decathlon, you were and you are still pushing for fundamental change. Charlie is convinced that any multinational that doesn't reply to one or even several of the challenges of the 17 SDGs will actually not survive beyond 2030. And for me, Charlie is a real change maker, and I'm stressing the word maker here, as we all probably over the, over the last months have discussed again and again the why of necessary changes in preparation for the next normal. So now we also want to collect inspirations about the how, and I think Charlie got some very hands-on ideas here to share. 
Uh, before we get starting with the program, we want to do also a bit of housekeeping, just one minute. We are anyway assuming that most of you are Zoom natives by now. Just to remind you, please, to mute while listening to others. The chat will be open, as you discovered already. Um, let, you, let us know your thoughts, where you're based. And uh, surely you're aware of the right top uh, corner of your window where you can switch between speakers, view, and gallery. So what's going to happen next? We will, um, we are not sure we wanted to beam you in some uh, breakout rooms as we are streaming. We are not sure if that works out. We'll see in a moment. Straight after that, Charlie will share the joy and the tears of the transformation process he launched. And there will be an opportunity to ask him questions that might arise. And then um, almost exactly in one hour's time, you will experience a very artful and really exciting harvesting by joining a virtual activist poster workshop, a virtual activist poster workshop with Esther. I don't want to reveal too much at this moment. We will finish 3.30 Berlin time. So maybe let's try. Um, can we um, beam into breakout rooms? Can I have a sign from someone if that's possible? Okay, so we're trying. And um, start, uh, stop um, once more. Uh, can you stop it once more? Because I would like to hand over to Esther because we have two questions which you can follow in the breakout rooms. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Annette. Uh, hello, everybody. It's so exciting to be here to, as uh, Annette said, uh, to, to get started with this show after preparing it for uh, one and a half months, I would say. So um, what we want to do with you now is uh, check in so that we can fully arrive with our minds, bodies, hands, the whole of us. And to do that, we want to, as uh, Annette said, we want to send you out into breakout groups. And in the breakout groups, we have three questions for you. Uh, first one, simple, your name, to introduce yourself to the others, where you are based. I must say already quite a few have shared this in the, in the chat, but it's nice if you're in a group to, to share where your feet, feet touch the ground. And the third question, the real question we want to ask you is why, what made you say yes to the invitation to be here today? So you have, five minutes uh, in the breakout group. Um, just a reminder, make sure that you distribute the time equally so that everybody has a say. And I would say, have fun, enjoy, connect. And for those of you who are watching us via live stream, a few of us will be staying here in the main room. And so you can to watch our conversations for the next five minutes. Right. Hi. So. <laughs> so, okay, who, is, who is still here in the main room? Just let's see. So let me ask a few questions. So, Annette, wh what do you expect in the next two weeks to come? What are your hopes? In the next two weeks to come, my hopes is to um, become hopeful again. Very simple. Because I think that was not very easy in the last weeks. Um, so I really hope to have some bonding, to have some ideas, hands-on ideas only, not only where we have to change something, but how can we do that? And to see the light on the horizon, I think that is what I am hoping for myself. Mm, all right. I see that if a couple of uh, participants didn't make it into the breakout rooms, so maybe Constantine, you can either send them or we can involve them here in the conversation. For example, I see that just Kashmira Modi joined us. Hello, Kashmira. I saw Hi. your face already. From where are you calling in? I'm calling in from India and I'm having some internet issues, not to be very uh, difficult. And so that's why I was a bit late. 
That's all right. What, what brings you into this uh, session here, Kashmira? Actually, my friend Erica Elam, she invited me and it was really spontaneous. I saw the email this morning and I thought, well, why not? This is a good topic and this is a good time. And so I, I uh, jumped in and I was, you know, I'm, I'm a bit two steps behind. It's a Monday morning for me. It's a Monday, Monday morning. And, but I'm happy to finally make it here. Welcome. Thank Welcome, you. Kashmira. Thank you. And who else do we have? Um, Holger Prante. Holger, you are still hidden. Are you here? Now, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, Hello, I'm just a bit uh, late. I'm coming from a coaching session and uh, I'm glad to see you all here again. Maybe some of you again, I would say. And I'm just preparing my equipment here, switch on all the lights and so on. So, this so Holger, what do, what do you expect from the Global Change Days? What make, made you sign up and join us here? Well, I have some uh, um, good experience, marvelous experience from the, from the last event uh, we were hosting in, in the end of uh, March. And I think this will, uh, I like the community very much. It's a great people together here, all the change makers doing a very good job in terms of uh, lighthouse, uh, providing orientation during these uh, difficult times. And I expect that um, this, this uh, I, I would like to say this feeling, the, the connectedness, um, uh, will we'll go on like we experienced during March. And I think uh, we'll have good ideas again, good exchange. And yeah, that's it. Uh, what I expect from this, from this community, from this event. Thank you. And we have a new participants joining probably just now. That's Lorraine. Lorraine with a wonderful second name, Margarita. Lorraine, from where are you calling in? I'm, from, I'm calling from Paris. Hi, everyone. Oh, I love Hi, Paris. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you coping? How are you doing, Lorraine? Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm starting a new activity. I'm doing what my clients are expected to do. I'm adjusting and uh, changing what needs to be changed because nothing is the same anymore. Hmm. So, starting anew. Right. Let's see who else we have. Diana Franco, who's a member of our team. Diana, from where are you calling in? Hello, I am calling from Egypt right now. Ah, how's the weather there? It's very sunny and very dry and very hot, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but I'm really happy to share with you here because uh, it's very important, the connections, the connections, the real connections, not, not only the... Um, digital connections, but the real human connections. Okay, everybody's coming in again. Aneta, over to you again. Yes, um, everyone there now already? No, just not quite. No. No. Wait Let's wait until everyone is there. We're nearly there. It looks as if some of them have been very engaged in their in their talks and using the very last seconds for their exchange. Really? I think everybody's back, Anita. Good, fantastic. Uh, so um, we'll come back and we will uh, straight jump now, as promised, into the conversation with Charlie. Um, Charlie, it's it's almost it's almost exactly one year ago when we met in Berlin with a with a tribe of theory people for a presencing seminar, and um, 
I was so impressed by your presence and, and what you had to say at the time that uh, Brigitta Villaronga and I invited you to our fireside chat a, week, a few weeks ago and people just didn't let go of you until 1.30 in the morning. And we didn't have that before, it's quite amazing. Today we have much, much less time. Um, so let's jump into media series uh, immediately, if that's okay for you. And I think we have, we have three levels that would be very interesting to, uh, to talk about. One level is to hear something about your individual journey that led you to become a globally trusted and I must say also famous change maker. And I know that there was a real trigger for that, that made everything move. And secondly, it would be interesting to learn about how you facilitated the vision 2030, which as I understand became 2021 very recently and things have changed even since the last weeks when last we saw each other. And that leads straight to the third level. Um, I'm very much interested to hear, and I think it's interesting for all of us, whether or how the narrative of your organization might have to be refined, to be developed or even changed through the crisis as a crisis often shows whether the stories that have been told are really rooted. So these, these three levels I um, would like you um, to, to take up if, if, you, if you like, and I hand over the baton to you now. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly from all over the world? Yes. Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Charlie Felgate. Yeah, it's my name. Um, I'm from Britain in England and Britain in England, England in Britain, let's say. Um, <laughs> and I'm very, really happy to be here today. Um, and I'm really here um, as a citizen of the world, let's say. I'm here on my own behalf as, a, as just a guy uh, sharing a story. And, uh, and I'm going to share my screen with you and take you on a journey, if I may, um, which I've been on myself. Now, I don't believe that what we have done, what I have done is the absolute truth, nowhere near. But um, if it can have be, if it can be any use to anyone, then let's, let's go there, okay? So yeah, I work for a company called Decathlon and about 18 months ago, I started a project called Vision 2030. What would be the vision of our company in 2030? That's changed. That's changed since about the 20th of March of this year. And we can, we'll go through why that's changed. COVID has, been, uh, has wrought havoc and destruction upon many, but it's also brought about huge opportunities. And let's say, windows of opportunity where systemic and radical change is now available, which I haven't known in my lifetime. So uh, we've rebaptized the project Vision 2021. So yeah, that's me. Um, I'm, I'm quite present on link LinkedIn. If you wish to connect, you can find out more about me there. So why am I here today? This is Lucy May. Lucy May is my daughter. I am lucky enough to have three children. And in 2012, um, in fact, I didn't always work for Decathlon. I began my career at Decathlon. I did seven years, and then I, I did 10 years working for myself. And I was brought up in a very uh, entrepreneurial business environment, family-wise, ecosystem-wise, business school. It was all about making money. And one day in 2012, uh, around the dinner table with the children, we were talking about what, what we would like to do when we grow up. I'm still thinking about it. And, um, and my daughter said to me, she said, oh, I want to be a teacher, Daddy. Do you think I can be a teacher? And I wasn't really listening, preoccupied by my own problems. And I said, yeah, yeah, you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. And she just looked up from her bowl of spaghetti and she said, 
Daddy, do you do everything that you want to do in the world? And that was the, my moment. That was my defining moment. So what do you do? Do you lie? Do you say, yeah, of course I do. I'm a macho dad and I can take on the world and everything's fine. No, and I actually decided to tell the truth that day. And I said, no, I don't. And I went on a rather lonely journey on my own for a few years where I didn't want to work in just for making money, for making money's sake anymore. And I wanted to work uh, for to create better impact for others and planet. But what I really wanted to do was to show the right example for my children, who I believe will be the, the real change makers. So I went on a journey of being a, a, a of creating conditions which would make my children become change makers. And hopefully they'll be with in this group, not before too long. So I work for a company called Decathlon. Uh, looking at where you guys are from, I th we're pretty much present in all of the countries, but we're a big sports retailer. Think of IKEA, but for sports products. Uh, we began in 1976 in Lille, here in France. And for the, for the last 20 years, we've been mostly selling our own products. So design, manufacture, and we sell our own products. Okay. Today, we're quite big. We have 1,643 stores. There's about 400 million people who buy our stuff every year. Uh, 92,000 teammates. Turnover is getting big, about $12 billion. And we're present in 57 countries. Okay. And our job is to make the pleasure and benefits of sport accessible to the many. So that's what Decathlon do, big sports retail company. And we've always done a vision exercise. So vision is part of our DNA. We've always done it collectively as well. Now, this comes from our CEO, uh, not even CEO, our founder. He used to be a CEO. There he is. Uh, Michel Leclerc, who even from the first few years of Decathlon would always get the employees together to collectively imagine the future for the company. So that's part of our DNA, collective intelligence. And for Michelle Leclerc, it's important to have a vision as soon as we become a group. It's what brings us together and it's what unites us. So that was the case in 1980, and it's still the case in 2020, probably more than ever, especially now that we are 57 countries around the world. And the vision for us is very much like the word that Holger used earlier on, lighthouses. I like that image with lighthouses on different continents. And for Decathlon, the vision is the lighthouse. It shows us where to go. So we've always done exercises of collective intelligence, but in 2016, we worked on quite a big one called Vision 2026. So I won't take you through this, but globally, we got 37,000 employees involved in our future vision exercise out of, at the time, 77,000. And it gave rise to um, sustainability causes, CSR causes, at least two. Uh, cause four, be where we are needed, which is our societal impact, and number five, preserve to protect. Now, uh, CSR wasn't present at all in Decathlon strategies before this vision, so it shows the power of what the vision can bring. So what was good about it, it was great. There was a very high energy, a lot of staff contributed, and it gave rise to these new CSR strategies. But, uh, you know, once it was uh, deployed, or at least communicated, I noticed a few things. I noticed that there seemed to be quite a level, a low level of adoption from certain leaders. And then two things that really bothered me. Um, it was all about us. It was all about Decathlon imagining the future for you, the people us thinking about what you need. So that bothers me a lot. Where is the voice of the stakeholders here? Because without you, there is no us. There is no us without you. The Decathlon is just a store in its ecosystem. So it seemed to me to be a bit weird that there was no voice of the stakeholders. And the thing that really made me sad, and it still does, was this disalignment between people what they were saying and what would they were doing the next day. So we'd get people coming to our vision workshops, you know, just delivering all of the things that they wanted to do 
in the world, in their lives, for their kids, in their job, in their for their company. And it was great. And we'd have all this output. And then they'd go away and just carry on normally. Like it never really ended. I thought that was a bit strange. And at the end of the day, I can really uh, bring, bring it down to this contrast, which we really felt. This contrast between two types of mentality, a more Western mentality, which says if the, if the roof ain't broke, don't fix it, versus a more, I don't know, Oriental mentality is fix the roof whilst the sun is shining. And in business terms, one of these is a short term and one of them is a long term, okay? And in businesses, generally Western organized businesses, the short, uh, the short term is often going to win. And this was a problem at Decathlon, and it still is in many ways, is that the business model of today works too well. So when it works too well, why change? That's a shareholder's argument. So I came on board about uh, a couple of years ago. And most good journeys, there's always a start point. First starting point was this. Uh, for those of you familiar with, with the French modern history, we had some social unrest going on in November 2018 with the, the Yellow Jacket movement in, in France. Uh, huge amounts of strike action every single weekend for a year or so. And our new president, our young uh, president, Emmanuel Macron, he decided to launch a great debate, a national debate, uh, where he was basically asking the question, French people, what do you want? What do you want? And of course, he'd go from village to village and, and, and speak to people where he could. But you can't do that on a massive scale. What you can do is create a platform of digital intelligence, uh, digital collective intelligence, and get people to go into the platform. So that was a starting point for me. I thought, well, if it's good enough for the French government, it's probably good enough for my company. Because we realized that if we wanted to get the voice of the stakeholders to share their view of our vision, then we would have to do it in different ways. Good stories start with people. Now, these three ladies here, these are my work colleagues. We have Audrey, and then we have Axel, and we have Stephanie. And they work for Decathlon in what we call our uh, pers a perspectivist uh, trends and tendencies uh, service. And I heard about these girls. I said, well, well, I want to work on the vision. I want to work uh, with the entire people in our ecosystems. And I said to them, I believe that businesses can change the world, but what are businesses? Businesses are just groups of people, groups of people under a name. Yes, of course. And then you have company culture and DNA of a business, which, which uh, gauges the way which, in which we behave. But at the end of the day, we're all people. And these three lovely people, they said to me, do you know what theory you is? I said, I have no idea. They said, well, go and train in theory you if you believe in opening up the voice of the stakeholders and then come back. And that's where I met you, Annette. Uh, and I think there's someone else as well from, from uh, Berlin where we were uh, just a year ago today. Because what we needed to do was change something. Transforming businesses. We've been working on it for years. And this is the problem. Transforming business. Why don't we help people to achieve the transformation that they yearn for already? Because people in a business, they're just like everyone else. They all have loved ones. They all have kids. They have friends and family and neighbors for whom they want the best. So let's work on that. And that's why we applied U theory to our vision process. We wanted to start a conversation. We wanted to talk to people. We wanted to open our minds, but that's not enough. We need to open our hearts, create dialogue with what's going on in other people's lives. And that way we can work out what can we build together? What problems can we solve together? And by creating dialogue, you then create empathy and compassion. And then we thought, well, if we can create this level of empathy and compassion amongst our employees, then there's probably a greater chance of them taking a step towards change. So that's the way we looked at it. So the vision process began. We had a great big process in July of communicating what we were going to do. And I had to find a great big team of people who were going to help me. 
that lasted a couple of months. Then we began with the open mind phase, co-inspiring. Then we moved on to co-exploration, which is the part where you open the dialogue with other people. And then we just finished the co-writing right now. That was the process. For those of you familiar with Theory U, co-inspiration, open mind, co-exploration, open heart, co-writing would then lead to the open will, which will happen, my company at least, in the next few months. So we created all of these uh, platforms of, of collective intelligence. We'd never done it before. In fact, nobody had ever done it before outside of the public sector. So it was very much learning by doing. We created all of these stories. We started off with what will be the future of people? What will be the future of sport? What will be the future of living? And then people got on and there were all these questions. So we had uh, 20, 25,000 inputs now uh, that went into this platform. And then what happened was we just began talking. We began talking to our stakeholders about what we want for our lives for tomorrow. And at this point, we still had never talked about decathlon. It's not important to talk about decathlon yet. Let's get people to think about what they want for their lives of tomorrow. And we invited people to write a story about what would happen in 2030. And we actually had uh, over 1,000 stories. And this is the change. This is the main change uh, in our process is that we stopped asking the wrong questions. The wrong question questions were, what will Decathlon be in the future? What is the future of retail? What will a store look like in 10 years? These are the wrong questions, questions that we'd been asking for a long, long time. We, and we turned the paradigm shift to the other side, and we started asking people, what do you want? What world do you want to live in? And once they decided, decided that, we would ask them, what problems do you want us, Decathlon, to help you with? And what role can we play in that world that you want to live in? So it's turning things around completely, which is extremely pertinent right now in, a, in, a, in the post-COVID era. Instead of looking at it from our own point of view, in on ourselves, we opened everything out and we looked at it from other people's point of view. We got them to write the vision. And when we said we were open to all, here's just a few photos. We went to retirement homes in Warsaw. We went to uh, mountain bike manufacturers in Taiwan. There's a university in Vietnam. Here's Olga in Hungary doing a vision workshop in the swimming pool. We're better to do one for the future of sport than with the people where they are swimming. At the bottom, we have my colleague Nathan in Belgium in a school. And there are some other colleagues there from Colombia. You see they're on their phones. They're putting their input about what they want for tomorrow directly in the platform. And the bottom right is a photo, the last physical workshop that took place and perhaps will be the last one because now we've really adopted uh, the, the virtual vision workshop and everybody's okay with that. So where are we? We're at Vision 2021. COVID has accelerated a rate of change. But at the end of the day, these things were always there. They were always been there. They've just been in our blind spot. And because business worked, we chose to ignore them, despite big mouths like me barking on about it internally. But now we have an opportunity to make that change. Vision now is entering the era of strategic vision, where there is more blurred lines between strategy and vision. Because at the end of the day, not about what's going to happen in 2030. Who knows what's going to happen in 2030? It's about what's happening now. But we know that the model of yesterday is not the model of tomorrow. And it's time to let that go. It really is time to let that go. Many stories start with people and they start with motivation and they start with listening to your own personal convictions. And I said, I, I, and as I said, businesses, I believe, have the capacity to change the world. And I believe that businesses are just a sum of the people. So if we get each and every one of, our, of, of people to investigate what is their driving force, what is their motivation, what makes them tick, what is their motor, then there's a greater chance of achieving this change that we want. My motor is to do what I can to 
contribute to making the world a little bit better for tomorrow for my children. And once you know what your motor is, then you can put that in a vehicle. Today, I put that in Decathlon as a vehicle. Know what your motor is, and that will drive you on forever. So thanks for uh, listening. Thank you very much. I've talked far too long as usual. Uh, if the story is of use to you, that's great. I'd be very happy to answer uh, any questions that you may have today. Thank you.